Hi guys, it is Christina from See You Online here, and today we're gonna to be going over the seven reasons you might not be making sales on Etsy. I have spent countless hours on Etsy from my print on demand store, from a different store I had before my print on demand store, which I no longer run because I realized just how much better it is to have a print on demand store where you don't have to spend countless hours fulfilling a product, which mine was digital drawings before. So every time I got a sale, it was like three hours of work, which was just super overwhelming and print on demand eliminated that kind of time I had to spend on fulfilling orders. So I preferred just to spend my time there. Anywho, that's just to say, I have spent a lot of time building up different shops on Etsy. So much time on this print on demand store. I love it. And also this year I've been doing Etsy audits. So I'm going through other people's stores and just letting them know what can be improved, trying to pinpoint exactly where or what is the reason that they aren't getting sales. And that has really helped me be able to kind of grab the eye on kind of just looking through someone else's store and being able to pinpoint it. And I want to share some of the most common things that I kind of tell these people who have paid me to do the audit so that maybe if you can't afford to do an audit, you can go audit your own store as well. So the first question to ask yourself is, is your store trustworthy? And what do I mean by that? If a customer goes into your store, is it complete? Does it look professional? Because if they go in and it looks like someone took two minutes to set this up and really didn't put any effort into their storefront, how can they trust you with ordering your product? If you can't finish that or make it look nice, how can they expect to get a trustworthy product from you? Some things you want to make sure are filled. You want your banner in there. You want to have your logo and you want them to match. Don't have just a random banner that looks nothing like the vibe of your logo and just make sure that they look kind of congruent. I'm not even sure if it's the right word, but make sure that they match together to give your store a feel to it. Do you have a picture of yourself in there? Etsy is a small business platform, so where it shows you, it shouldn't just be that little gray avatar and it shouldn't even just be a logo. It should be a picture of you. On Etsy, people are looking for small businesses and they're not buying from a website. They want to buy from you, a small business owner. So give them your face. Show them that you are an actual human being selling these products to them. And then down below, is your information complete? There is an about me and there is a store policies. There's even an FAQ area, which you can fill out. But the most important is filling in your about me and filling in your store policies. These also give to Etsy hint that your storefront is complete. If you leave like the about me empty and you never go fill it out, Etsy doesn't count your storefront as complete and actually won't even rank you higher. So it might seem tempting to just focus on your listings, but your storefront is very, very important. So go in and just look through it, spend some time creating your logo and banner and filling out all of your information. Another thing that gives off towards trustworthiness is reviews. And I know it might be hard. You might be saying, this is, I'm just starting my store, so of course I don't have reviews. That's what I'm trying to get. But your first reviews and your first orders are always going to be the hardest. So this might be the time to call in some family and friends and ask for some help. Post it to your Facebook, social media, ask some friends, ask your sister. Maybe you even want the product for yourself. So maybe just ask a friend to purchase it for you. You can pay them back and ask them to leave you an honest review. One thing not to do is do not order your own product from your own IP address. Etsy can block this as seeing that you're just trying to create some fake reviews for yourself, which you kind of are if you're ordering for yourself. So if you do want your own product, get a friend to purchase it, have it sent to a different place and don't use the same computer or the same IP address that you run your store from. Number two, how are your mock-up photos? Are they working for you or against you? This is a huge one because Etsy is a visual platform. Yes, titles, tags, descriptions, everything help you rank and make sales, but no one is buying off of your title. They are buying off of your mock-up photo. Are you just using supplier photos or just bland photos that aren't really making 
or giving anything to your design, then you should really be rethinking your mock-up photos. When people are scrolling in a sea of pictures, can you look at yours and be like, I think someone would stop on that one and be like, pick that above all of the other ones out there. That's why I think it is so important to invest in mock-up photos. So I own so many of them. One, because I can never make up my mind. But two, there's always such good ones coming out on Etsy. So those are my favorite way to, my favorite way to go about getting mock-up photos is to buy some from Etsy. And I make sure that they are aesthetically pleasing. And I know some of them are quite expensive. Some can be up to seven, eight dollars. But in the long run, I really do think it is worth it because it can be the reason someone purchase, purchases from you or not. Another thing is, can you even see your mock-up photo? And that might seem like a silly thing to ask, but so many times people will put on their mock-up photo and when you're uploading it, it looks like a big, it looks like a big photo, like you can read it, but you're using a small little text or maybe they have a small design. And then on their mock-up photo, they don't realize when people are scrolling through Etsy that your window or what they see is a lot smaller than if they clicked into your listing or what you see on your end. So what I like to do is once I upload a photo or I upload my mock-up photos and I publish my listing, I'll go into my storefront and scroll through and I kind of sit back from my computer and I try to see, can I still read that? <laughs> and it should be very easy to read. If someone can't understand what your shirt says, they're not going to read your title to figure it out. They're just going to scroll right on by it. And you don't even have to like zoom in on your like editing platform, right in your listing, you can adjust your thumbnail photo and just zoom in as much as you need to for this to become very clear to see exactly what your design is. Number three, is your Etsy listing misleading or confusing? By confusing, I mean, perhaps they go into your product and you list 30 colors and they can't figure out which color is which or perhaps they can't figure out their sizing. Perhaps they don't know anything about shipping. Your description should include every possible question that someone might have about your product. Of course, there are little things that you will never think of. I still get them, but the more questions that you can answer before they message you, or maybe they'll just never message you, the better. I've had many times where someone messaged me before, um, say I forgot a size guide in there, ask me about sizing or I forgot to put a color chart, or I didn't upload a mock-up with a color that I offered. They sent me a question about it. I answered within a few hours and they never got back to me. They might've purchased earlier, but because of that message, they had time to search through other Etsy listings and perhaps choose something from somebody else, losing me a sale and wasting my time too, because I could have answered that in my description, but now I had to go answer a customer service question and really, if you can minimize as many service questions as possible, it's better for you and for the customer. So just try to answer everything to the best that you can. Again, there are things that you probably will never even expect to come up, but then maybe if you realize there's, they keep coming up, start adding that information into either your descriptions or create a slide photo with some of the common answered questions that you might be getting so that this person can quickly look, find the answer of what they're looking for and quickly decide to make a purchase. And then there is what I'm referring to as misleading. And this is what a pricing strategy I call deceptive pricing, which I do not like to use because I think it actually hurts your store. And what is deceptive pricing? I'm sure you've seen it. When you go into Etsy and you see somehow someone is selling a sweatshirt for $9 and you're thinking, I cannot compete with that. How does someone charge for $9 and make profit? Answer is they don't. They're using deceptive pricing. Go into their product and add that sweatshirt to your basket and I can guarantee you it's probably coming out to $39.99. And how do they do that? Either they create one variation of the product that's $9 and sold out all the time so there's never an option for a $9 product or it's a toddler, it's a toddler like onesie, but it's a shirt that would never go on a toddler onesie. It was not meant for a baby. They just put it there 
so that it looks like they're selling something for $9 because their main picture is a sweatshirt, but it's not. And then sometimes they also charge for like $10, $20 shipping. And yes, that is understandable. But if you are buying a $15 shirt and you clicked into this listing expecting to spend $15 and suddenly you go to check out and it is way more, they're very lucky likely, sorry, not to purchase. And this also hurts your conversion rate, making you rank lower because you have a lot of people clicking into your listing and then leaving. So your conversion rate drops. Etsy sees that as a sign that you are not doing well, ranks you lower. So yes, you might not get as many original clicks as someone charging $9, but when people go in, they are not shocked by the price and it leaves, I think, a better taste in their mouth. For me, if I see that, I just don't purchase and I look for someone who has more honest pricing. Honestly, it just makes me mad. I don't know about everyone. I know it works for some people, but I just don't really see how it can be that beneficial to your store. Number four, is your title searchable? And when I'm talking about your title, I kind of also mean your titles, tags, and descriptions, but let's just focus on your title. Does your title have keywords that an actual human Put yourself in the shoes of your customer. Is this something someone would type into Etsy, first of all? And then if they came onto your product with that search, are they gonna be like, yes, this is what I was looking for, so I am going to buy it? Because if not, then it shouldn't be in your title. For example, something that I see a lot is gift for her or gift for him. Yes, people might search this, if they one didn't know their partner very well, because I very rarely search gift for her, maybe gift for soccer lover would be more something someone would search, maybe like a book lover gift, maybe a Pilates gift, something else that shows one, it's a little bit more personal, but back to gift for her, even if they did, this search has over 3 million people using that tag on Etsy. One, it's not even a good tag or a title, but if someone was searching gift for her, what are the chances, one, they get to page 3,000 of Etsy and you show up and they were like, yes, this is exactly what I wanted. The chance is probably 0 0.000001, probably impossible. But if you had a, a funny Halloween shirt and maybe it had to do with teachers, Halloween teacher shirt, I could definitely see someone searching that up. Halloween nursing shirt, Halloween nurse shirt. I could 100% see a nurse searching for that because it is one very niche down. So if you show up, you're likely to rank high and someone will probably be like, yes, that is what I was looking for. So really just when you're writing your tags and your titles, just think about what would I search on Etsy, one, to find this, and two, is it relevant enough? Number five, ask yourself, is this niche oversaturated and undersearched or just either or. The problem with saturation is yes, for the very, very obvious niches, things are oversaturated now. And they probably actually never even worked in the first place. And let me explain. Say you were designing a mom shirt. A lot of people have done mom shirts. It is a very, very, very common niche but you might have room more to grow in something in a sub niche, maybe an interest within a mom, maybe a twin mom, maybe a mom that loves Pilates, maybe a girl mom, maybe a new mom. There are so many mom sub niches that will have less competition, but they're actually probably more likely to be bought because they're more personalized. Would you get my, your mom a mom shirt? Or if your mom is an avid, avid biker, would you get her a biker mom shirt? I know for my dad, I would never just get him a dad shirt, but I have so many biking dad shirts because my dad loves to bike and he loves those shirts. But you can accidentally niche down too far because even if you are the only person showing up on the first page for a certain search, doesn't mean people are ever going to search for it. What if you were doing a quintuplet mom shirt, for example, a little bit extreme, but for the sake of this example, let's talk about that. You're probably the only one doing it, good for you. But it's also very unlikely. There are probably a few in the world, but how many are thinking to shop on Etsy 
that are within your shipping ranges that like these types of gifts. For this whole niche thing, I do recommend using a tool. I would probably use um, E-Rank is kind of what I use to find unsaturated niches because if you have the paid plan of E-Rank, it both tells you how many monthly searches a keyword has and how much competition. So this can really help you figure out if it's even worth designing for in the first place. Number six, how many products do you have? I've seen this a lot where people come to me and they were like, I've worked so hard on my print on demand store and I'm not making any sales and I don't know why. And they have 10 listings. Yes, I am sure it was very hard to get to 10 listings, especially your first ones are really hard because you're figuring it out. You're slow. Trust me, when you do it more, you will be super fast. I can turn out a listing like in my sleep now because I have just done it so many times, which you will get to. But don't get overwhelmed at the beginning and just stop and then think that people are going to find those 10 products, especially with print on demand. It is very much another a numbers game, but don't sacrifice your quality. But you do want to be getting up more and more. You want to be testing different niches. You want to be testing different designs to see what works. And if you're not throwing things up there, you have a way less chance of being found. And then you will probably be making less and less sales. So I am always adding to my store. I have 800 listings now and I do not plan to stop. I try to add a few more every single week, maybe a few a day, even if I can, because I am just tossing the net out there to see what bites. And when I figure out which niches and which products sell, I create more like that just to keep it rolling. And that has worked very well for me. You can't just put up five designs and leave them and expect to be making a decent income off that at all. And the hardest one to tell people of all, it still pains me to tell some people, but are your designs good? And that might sound so kind of demoralizing, but trust me, for number one, things will get better and so will your designs. I look back on my first designs and I laugh. I put way too much effort into them, creating kind of designs that would never sell, graphics that didn't stick out at all. And honestly, I look back and I can understand these probably would have never sold, but there is ways to figure out and find designs that might sell for you because they work good on t-shirts. Number one advice for this is study designs. Go into Etsy, use tools to find bestsellers or even some just have a bestseller sign on them and just start taking notes or favoriting them and then try to find a way to apply a certain design that's selling really well to a new niche. So for example, you have an eat, sleep, save lives, repeat shirt that you found on Etsy. Can you apply that to a different niche? Can you do eat, sleep, teach, repeat and do a similar design? Maybe you notice that it's a nice font because it's like a big thick font and just the way that it's laid out on the shirt looks really nice. Do that exact same thing, but you are not copying because you are changing the niche and making it something else entirely. Get some feedback from friends and family. Ask them to go through and see if maybe they could recommend a way to make this more appealing for someone to buy. I find usually big, bold lettering is very helpful. If you do really thin lettering and you can't read it from your mock-ups, again, back to the whole, can you read your mock-ups? It doesn't usually sell. I like to use bold, thick fonts that are usually just in white because it has a very good contrast, sorry, white and black. Very good contrast with the t-shirt colors that just sticks out. If you are not studying other people's stores and listings, you will never understand what is selling. And if you're not understanding what is selling, how can you apply that to your own store? All right, guys, I hope that all helped. Maybe write these all down and then go through your own store and give yourself a little audit. Get friends to give you a little audit. If you want me to do a little audit, just reach out to me and we can arrange something as well. I have them turned off right now, but they will be turning back on shortly. And don't get discouraged early on. Like I said, I was still making sales when I first started, but now I look back on my first like products and I'm like, wow, I didn't follow any of those. And I am one surprise I even made sales to begin with. But over time, through doing and doing and doing, you just get better. You don't even notice you get better. I never hit a point where I'm like, wow, my designs suddenly look a lot better than they used to. 
it was just through continuous, continuous practice and studying through other stores that I subconsciously started applying it to my own designs and my own stores. And I really think I have come a long way, even from just designs from a few months ago. I'm recently going through design that I did maybe like six months ago and I'm improving the SEO and the titles because I'm starting to realize people would have never searched that keyword to begin with. So don't get discouraged and keep going. Thanks again, guys. And if you haven't yet, please give me a subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to focus on growing my YouTube channel so I can provide some longer form content for you guys. And if you haven't yet, also give me a follow on my TikTok at c.uonline. And I'll see you online. Do you get it? Okay, thanks. <laughs>